Okay, the fourth methodology or, or approach to develop information systems that we're, we are going to look at is so-called rapid application development, sometimes called RAD. Now, this one is a, is a, as the name suggests, a rapid development process. It's in contrast to the first three approaches that we just looked at, waterfall, parallel, and V, which are structured approaches, structured approaches, which means they're a big deal. They take a long time. They have a rigid structure to follow. RAD, on the other hand, is meant to get a working system in the hands of the users very quickly. There are several, at least three, different flavors or versions of rapid application development. One way that RAD speeds things up is it uses special tools, so-called computer-aided software engineering or case tools, as well as JAD sessions, joint application development sessions, where the people get together in groups and they brainstorm and they try to get features working very quickly. It also uses so-called productivity-enhancing fourth-generation visual programming languages, such as Visual Basic.net and code generators. Now, while RAD, these approaches, these techniques, these tools that are used in RAD do speed up, increase the speed and the quality of system development, sometimes they produce a problem in managing user expectations. That is, the, the users that are involved in the rapid application development come to think that you can get more in less time without paying a price, which is not true. There are at least three different flavors, as I say, to RAD development. The so-called iterative development, which breaks the overall project into a series of versions that are developed sequentially. The so-called system prototyping version, in which the analysis, design, and implementation phases occur concurrently in order to quickly develop a simplified version of the, of the proposed system and give it to the users quickly for evaluation and feedback. This system prototype is a quick and dirty version of the system, and it really provides minimal features. It's just meant to get the give it to the users quickly so they can play around with it and get a feel for what the system is supposed to do. And thirdly, the so-called throwaway prototyping RAD approach, where you also develop prototypes, but these prototypes are mainly used to explore design alternatives rather than to serve as the, the actual system, the actual final system. The idea with so-called throwaway prototyping is, just as the name su suggests, you develop a prototype, let the user see it, you throw it away, you do this again and again, other prototypes. The idea, however, is to migrate or evolve into a so-called design prototype, which again is not meant to be a working system. It just has enough details in it to enable the users to understand the, uh, the issues under, uh, under consideration, the issues that are important, the features that the final system should have, and the look and feel of the, of the final system. For example, in throwaway prototyping, you may develop a bunch of screens, uh, the user interface, for example. That's a very common approach. Uh, forms that will actually appear to the user when they use the system, even if these forms don't work, even if there's little functionality behind it, you're showing the user, giving the user a sense of the look and feel of the final system. This is a picture representing the process for the first RAD approach, the iterative development methodology, where you go through a really quick analysis design implementation. You come to the first system version. You see what it can do and what it doesn't do. You throw it away or you, you put it aside. Then you go through analysis design implementation again, come to version number two, see how that's improved, see what still needs work. You set that aside. 
then you go through the iteration a third time, going through the classic steps of analysis, design, implementation. You repeat this until you finally evolve into a, a prototype version. The iterative approach gets a system to the user quickly, and with each version, they can ide identify additional needs. Some problems with this approach is users really don't have a complete system for a long time. The versions are toys, and so the users must be patient and wait. Rad prototyping really is similar to the iterative prototyping, where you keep recycling through analysis, design, implementation to get to a prototype, and you, you go through this process again and again until the prototype becomes stable, and then you have a final implementation phase and you, de you develop the system. The, one of the advantages of prototyping is you don't have to know all the requirements up front. In fact, you, all you need is some of the requirements and you develop a prototype that meets them. And then when you have that prototype, you determine what the additional requirements are and you go through the cycle again and so forth. And again, the advantages of prototyping Users have something to work with very quickly, and you have these feedback cycles, which enable users to say, oh, yeah, I forgot that requirement. We need to put that one in, and you address it the next cycle. Um, weaknesses, the, the analysis is superficial. It's, you only consider some of the requirements. Initial design decisions might be bad ones, and you might have to, once you, once you actually play around with the prototype, and you see that the design is bad and broken, you might have to go back and change that. And sometimes features that are overlooked, it's not so easy to, to insert them on down the line. Throwaway prototyping is very simple, uh, very similar to um, the iterative and the just, just plain prototyping approach. The only, critic, the only real difference is that you throw the prototype away. It's discarded with each cycle. Let's move on to Agile, the fifth category of development methodologies. Agile is, a, is also a fast approach. It's not a structured approach. And Agile really refers to a group of programming type or centric methodologies that the goal is to shortcut the SDLC, compress it, make it faster. It agile characteristic of agile is that much of the um, heavy duty modeling and the documentation that is required in all of the SDLC phase deliverables is eliminated or certainly minimized. The main means of communication and working is face-to-face -face communication with Agile. And again, it focuses on very short cycles that produce a complete software product. There are proprietary or company-centric uh, approaches to Agile development, including extreme programming, Scrum, and the dynamic system development method, or DSDM. So to be clear, in contrast to the first three structured approaches, which were waterfall, parallel, and the V model, those were the first three structured approaches. The last three non-structured approaches that are faster were four, the iterative development approach, Five, the prototyping approach, which has systems prototyping and throwaway pro prototyping. And six, the agile approach. Some of the advantages of the agile are very similar to those for the iterative and prototyping approaches. You get to the end faster. You have a working model faster. And the non-structured approaches in general favor systems for which you do not know all the requirements up front. The structured approaches are better if you know all the requirements up front. 
Now, Agile has some unique weaknesses and it has a lot of critics. You've got to be disciplined. It's a, it's a technique that requires a lot of training on how to do it. And the users must be involved in the process. You, just, you can't just have the developers doing the Agile development. The end users who might be non-technical need to be involved to assess the, the progress and the systems that come out. Again, it's hard to learn and it works better in smaller projects, particularly groups that have worked together before.